What's going on everybody, C4 here and welcome back to the news episode of the 32 Team 7 Round Mock Draft Series where today we're going to be taking a look at the team that holds the number 7 overall pick in the first round of the 2019 draft and that is the Jacksonville Jaguars and now there's a lot of ways the Jags could address their team with this 7th pick but it does seem pretty much like consensus is it will be an offensive player and I tend to agree with that. There's three players that I really thought of when it came to this pick and this selection that could very well be a tremendous fit here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. First was Jawan Taylor, the tackle from Florida. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, they currently have maybe a perceived hole at right tackle. Personally, I do like Will Richardson, the fourth round pick from last year as a, uh, as a potential option as a starter. I thought he had a lot of upside. So I was like, all right, no. And we already saw Jawan Taylor go in the uh, 17th pick to the New York Giants in that mock draft. Next one was TJ Hawkinson. He's in the he's in the goddamn thumbnail. Tight end is a big time position of need, I think, here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. You got Nick Foles. Congrats on that. Please treat him well or else. And there's not really any tight ends on the roster that are worth their weight. And so they have Jeff Swain coming over from the Dallas Cowboys in free agency. He's not much. And I mean, Nick Foles doesn't really rely on the tight ends a whole lot. It's not like, you know, you desperately have to have a tight end for Nick Foles to succeed in your offense, but it would be a big help. And TJ Hawkinson, yeah, that, that, was a, that was an ideal pick, but we will address the tight end position a little bit later on. For me, the number one thing that this team needs is that perimeter outside wide receiver. They currently are lacking that. They have D.D. Westbrook. They got DJ Char, Keelan Cole. Those guys are all fine as part of like a rotational unit. Mark Easley, the second round pick in 2014, is probably the most overpaid player on this roster next to Marcel Darius. And I firmly expect Mark Easley will be a slot, but I think going towards next year where he has an $8 million cap hit, he going to be gone. Then you got Chris Conley coming in free agency. Yeah, there's some athletic upside there, but he's never really produced in his career. And, you know, when things couldn't have been easier last year for him to succeed in Kansas City, he still just put up some modest numbers. But there is some upside there. And obviously, you're kind of hoping that DJ Chark can take the next big step. But for me, at pick seven, I'm going DK Metcalf, wide receiver from Ole Miss. Now, this is easy for me to say as a, not a fan of the Jacksonville Jaguars, not a fan of a team that needs a wide receiver to, you know, gamble. Take this early gamble. In, in reality, you know, if you're asking me to be absolutely safe with where I feel comfortable with DK Metcalf, I'm starting to look into the 20s. Maybe it's the Baltimore Ravens because they're, you know, you have to develop them. You have to hope that John D. Filippo and whoever the other wide receiver coach is can develop them. But I think they've done a pretty decent job in developing their wide receivers. Keelan Cole came out of nowhere that he played pretty well. Dede Westbrook, who was, you know, fairly highly regarded, has some off the fields. He's playing very, very well for them now. So I, I like to think that for whatever it, were, it is worth, the Jacksonville Jaguars have been able to develop their wide receivers. And when you look at DK Metcalf, everything about him is, is freaky. His height, weight, speed. Is just raw power. You got to look at, you know, this ability to run whatever limited routes he can at an extremely high level. Like um, uh, Brett Coleman did a breakdown where he literally said DK Metcalf's route running tree, because so many people want to critique him, is literally the exact same as Megatron's. So I, I feel like, you know, I'm not going to give that comparison. Everyone knows I am a big DK Metcalf fan. But I think for an outside wide receiver, you're not going to get a better guy with higher upside than DK Metcalf because you can get him to put it all together. You know, he's the next Julio Jones. And we saw what the Atlanta Falcons gave up to trade up to get Julio Jones. Like two first round picks. So I'm not, you know, DK Metcalf's not on a finished product level, if you will, say to compare him to a Julio Jones. But I think with the upside, there's no other wide receiver in this draft class that can even match his upside. Now, here's what I'm going to be able to bring in to you Jags fans that are watching this. As an Eagle fan and telling you about Nick Foles, the number one thing Nick Foles needs to succeed is that big outside perimeter wide receiver. You watch Nick Foles succeed during that Super Bowl run, during literally last season when he came in for Carson Wentz. It was his connection with Alshon Jeffrey, that jump ball powerhouse type wide receiver, which you're going to get in DK Metcalf. And then you're getting, you know, Alshon Jeffrey ran like a 4 6 40 or something like that. You just throw in DK Metcalf, just a much better athlete than Alshon Jeffrey. It brings that dimension that Nick Foles so desperately needs outside of wide receiver that they were pretty much lacking at this point because, you know, you're gambling that DJ Chark can be that guy or Chris Conley can emerge as that guy. Whereas you draft DK Metcalf at seven, you get that guy plus that much more diversity to that offense. I think it is a risky pick. You need to understand the risk of the pick. But if Nick Foles is your guy, you need to find that that target that can be his Alshon Jeffrey. And what you get that is in DK Metcalf and a lot more. And then just imagine if he pans out and DJ Chark pans out, you have like the ultimate height, weight, speed wide receivers. 
Going into the second round of pick 38, I was liking Irv Smith Jr., tight end from Alabama, as I mentioned, at that pick number seven. They could look at addressing the tight end there, but I feel like you get DK Metcalf, and then the second round you get a tight end that is still, you know, definitely, I would say, in that tier one for tight ends in this year's draft class in Irv Smith. He's an absolute complete tight end. Now, he's undersized, which is why he's going to get drafted after a Noah Fant, after a TJ Hawkinson, but he's an absolute mismatch across the field. He can line up everywhere that you want him to. He can line up at tight end. He can line up in the slot. He can line up in the backfield. And I, I really feel like the biggest hole overall on this Jacksonville Jaguars offense is that tight end position. And getting someone like Irv Smith that can come in and contribute right away in that second round is tremendous value to fill a massive need here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I like Nick Foles with those weapons. A healthy Leonard Fournette, D.D. Westbrook, Mark Lee, D.K. Metcalf, Irv Smith Jr., D.J. Chark, Chris Conley, Keelan Cole. There's a lot of weapons to go around for Nick Foles to succeed in Jacksonville. Moving into the third round where the Jacksonville Jaguars have two picks. First up at 69, I was selecting Juan Thornhill, free safety from Virginia. He absolutely had a huge combine, uh, insane jumps, just showed off. He has hops. The kid got hops. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Byron Jones when he kind of came out of nowhere out of UConn. Uh, but when you look at Juan Thornhill, he has cornerback traits as a safety. I think he fills in for Deshaun Gibson and starts at free safety there. They have Jared Wilson uh, right now. Eh, you know, they, they hit. I can't believe they got a tremendous value last year at strong safety in third round, uh, Ronnie Harrison out of Alabama. And you pair that with Juan Thornhill. I mean, you already know they got in corners, Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Boye. Then you might have one of the better, more underrated young safety tandems in the AFC if you go with Ronnie Harrison and Juan Thornhill. Now, Juan Thornhill might not be available at pick 69 because of how well he had his combine. But for my mock draft, he was still there. I think given the fact that they moved on from Tashawn Gibson to kind of help out their salary cap scenario, I think someone like Juan Thornhill can and potentially will start at free safety and be a big-time contributor for that defense as a rookie. Then finishing up in the third round of pick 98, I was selecting Connor McGovern, offensive guard from Penn State. He's a very versatile offensive line, pretty much can play everywhere in the interior, but I kind of see him challenging for that right guard spot with A.J. Can. A.J. Can has been a little bit of a weak link for that offensive line that spent a lot of money uh, in Andrew Norwell a year ago to try to make them really, really good because obviously you want to make things easier for Leonard Fournette and help them establish a run game, which will be kind of important with Nick Foles now as their starter. I think a guy like Connor McGovern comes in and can challenge for that right guard spot or very well just be that much needed interior offensive line depth because again, if you're looking for an underrated weakness, I would say, of this Jacksonville Jaguars offense in general is just the depth along the offensive line, especially when it comes to the interior. And I think in the third round, you get a guy that can challenge for a starting spot, but much more so just be well-rounded depth, be that sixth offensive lineman that can dress week in, week out in Connor McGovern. Plus, hey, he was a big reason and a big part of why Saquon Barkley was so successful two years ago at Penn State. Moving into the fourth round, pick 109. I was selecting Jalen Ferguson, defensive end from Louisiana Tech. This is a play that comes in with insane college production. I think he had 17 sacks last year as a senior, 45 career sacks total, but he absolutely tanked his pro day. Like his cone drills, his agility drills were like bottom like 3% of all players. So like it was horrible, absolutely horrible. You thought DK Metcalf was bad with agility. It came to Jalen Ferguson. Now there was some tweets saying that like the weather was bad and he was like on his sixth and seventh try, and he's fatigued, this and that, this and that. Still, it wasn't that great, but the tape is still very, very intriguing. Uh, and I think ultimately brings great rotational value at defensive end. This is a team that might be getting ready to move on from Calais Campbell in the coming future because he's super old. And, you know, who do you have outside of that for depth? Dwayne Smoot, the third-round pick in 2017, gives you some rotational versatility. Obviously, Ngakwe is going to be a starter, but I think someone like Jalen Ferguson will come in, be another rotational defensive end there to help things out in Jacksonville. As, you know, they effectively, they have to start cost-cutting. Every year, they're going to be losing some of these big-name guys because they all went in that big window thinking that they could splurge on free agency because they were sucking. And now it's come time. We already saw it with this offseason where they get rid of Tashawn Gibson, uh, Malik Jackson, uh, Barry Church, I think, was another one. A couple other guys uh, to kind of tighten things up with the cap. I think it's just going to continue to be a purge there on the defensive line. And looking forward, you know, you got Taven Bryan, you got Yannick Ngakwe, and there's a very well a good chance that Jalen Ferguson, you invested him in the fourth round here, you know, slipping a little bit because I think of that pro day, and you might very well get yourself a long-term starter. Uh, and But right now, just have him develop behind Calais Cable and use him in a rotation. And then we got in the sixth round, a pick 178. I was selecting Brett Rippon, quarterback from Boise State. I think he'll come in immediately and be the top death behind Nick Foles. And I think if you're looking at these quarterbacks, they're going to be available day two, day three. Obviously, I've already kind of said Tyree Jackson, I think, is the best value. But I think if you're going to, you know, beyond the third round and fourth round, I think that then moves on to Brett Rippon. Brett Rippon already comes in with a very strong backup grade. Uh, to be a quarterback in this draft class. But if I had to say any quarterback that we selected on day three that might have that potential somehow at some point in their career to become a franchise quarterback, I might put that in a gamble.
available on Brett Rippon. I think if you have Nick Foles, clearly there's some risk there for Jacksonville Jaguar fans given that huge contract. If he can be that guy, if he can be that guy that he was for my Philadelphia Eagles. And even as an Eagle fan, I can admit that there is some risk there. But when you look behind that, Cody Kessler won't really be the guy. You got Tanner Lee. He's not really the guy. I think Brett Rippon would be a great value pick and uh, could very well be Yo, know, if, if you're making a gamble, he could, you know, obviously you could, hey, they had, they had Blake Bell, the bell dozer at tight end last year, was a quarterback at Oklahoma. You could take a gamble there if you really want to, but the smart money, not doing that, will be grabbing a guy like Brett Rippon in the sixth round, have him come in, develop behind Nick Foles, and hey, maybe, just maybe two, three years down the line, you, when Nick Foles' contract runs out, maybe you guys have a Super Bowl, maybe you guys have a couple AFC championships, I'll be pulling for you, because BDN, Brett Rippon could start to pay his own dividends in value because learning from a thing or two from Nick Foles and could very well be a new starting quarterback. But for now, let's just set expectations somewhat reasonable. I think he'd be a top-notch backup behind Nick Foles. And then finishing up in the seventh round at pick 236, Ireland selecting Tyree St. Louis. Tyree St. Louis, offensive lineman from Miami. He's an athletic offensive tackle with upside, I think, potentially to challenge Will Richardson for that right tackle spot. But he's versatile, played both and started at both left and right tackle for the Hurricanes throughout his career. Like, again, I'm, I'm kind of gambling and putting my investment in Will Richardson to be the starting right tackle to open up camp because obviously you could look at that as a weakness, but I really did like him uh, last year when he was coming out of uh, NC State um, to be a potential starting tackle. I thought that was great value. In the fourth round, I don't necessarily know if he played. So I mean, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm pleading ignorance to if he's played and hasn't been great or was a turnstile or whatever. But you know, based upon his NC State, uh, my report that I had for him last year, man, I was really high on him. He was like almost a fringe top five tackle for me. So the fact that they got that, and you know, bringing a guy like Tyree St. Louis that can be a depth player and maybe potentially challenge at right tackle in the seventh round, but might you know more so have to land himself on the practice squad. It's still some good value there in the seventh round for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And at the very least, adds more competition to earn that starting right tackle spot if it's Will Richardson's to have. And with that, we have completed the seven-round mock draft here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Cook a you know, big risk. DK Metcalf, that could rub some fans the wrong way. Let me know in the comment section below, Jag fans in particular, if you agree or disagree with this mock draft that you saw here with you today. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4, saying peace out.